time she smiles at you You think you found an angel's face But don't give in My friend, where angels go Trouble follows And when she's in your arms You feel so heavenly That you can see the danger there Take care where angels go Trouble follows Sad, it's just as well. You know where angels go. Angels go. Trouble follow. Get discouraged. I'm sure you'll do better next time. <laughs> You're great, Sister George. What do you mean, Sister George? That's St. George the Dragon Killer. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that, Mother? I did. And you're looking at one dragon St. George isn't going to kill. Have you discussed the youth rally with the sisters? Oh, yes. Yes, we've talked about it. I can't say they're entirely enthusiastic, Your Excellency. Uh, except for Sister George. But then going on the rally was her idea in the first place. And a very good idea. The church wants our young people involved, Mother. There are great changes in the air. And Sister George is close to what's happening with our youth. Do you mind if I'm not exactly crazy about what's happening with our youth? <laughs> you haven't expressed your feelings about the rally. Let's say I'm trying to keep an open mind, although I do have reservations. Oh, it is a long trip. 3,000 miles by bus. Uh, that's not what I meant, Your Excellency. 
Although, now that you mention it, if we have to go to a rally, couldn't we go to one a little closer to home? That's not a bad thought. Perhaps you and Sister George can organize one in this area. Uh, no, th that's not what I meant either. Of course, I realize that there isn't much time in which to prepare for such a long journey. You may not be able to cope Anyone with Anyone who's coped with adolescent girls for 20 years and survived can cope with anything. Splendid. Then it's all settled. What settled? That you're going to the rally. That isn't what I said, Your Excellency. Oh, you'd rather Sister George took the girls? I should say not. That bus doesn't leave with my girls unless I'm on it. Then it is all settled. You're making the trip, too. No, you see, I was trying... Oh, you trapped me, Your Excellency. If I did, it'll be the first time I've been able to beat you at your own game. Oh, put aside your reservations, Mother. I'm sure you're going to enjoy every minute of it. Mm, I doubt it, but I'll try. I envy you. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful experience. We really should congratulate Sister George for suggesting that St. Francis participate in the rally. Yes, of course, Your Excellency. We need Sister George, Mother. She's a dynamic force, but she does need direction. And with your help, she'll make an important contribution. You've been very patient with her, and I know it's been trying. In fact, sometimes I wonder how you've been able to take it. I pray a lot. Well, you couldn't find a better place to pray in. There's such serenity here, such peace. For these rare blessings, we should give thanks to... Sister George. training school for mad bombers. Teaching children to make bombs is not part of our curriculum, Sister George. My lecture was intended to alert the class to the dangers in ordinary household chemicals. I certainly never expected the girls to use that information to make a bomb. Who would? I would. But then I've had 20 years in which to familiarize myself with the Machiavellian workings of the adolescent mind. And you're relatively new at it. I'm also aware that we'd lack certain facilities that you were accustomed to at your former post, and that our building is antiquated. Huh, not half as antiquated as some of the sisters. They are dedicated nuns and teachers, and St. Francis has one of the highest scholastic standings in the state. When our girls leave here, sister, they are educated. They are literate, not educated. There is a difference, Mother. There is a whole world outside of St. Francis, and these girls should know about it. That's true. But first, we must do our job. So in the future, please try to remember that when you plant a seed in a mind like Roosevelt's, chances are you will get an explosion, not a flower. I called you together because I have very important news for you. St. Francis will definitely participate in the Interfaith Youth Rally to be held in Santa Barbara, California. <gasps> His Excellency is very enthusiastic about the project. Bless him. Then we're really going. It will be a new experience for us. The rally will be interfaith, interracial, and co-educational. Co-educational? With boys? The expenses will run about $150 for each girl, and those chosen to go will have to contact their parents. Now, we're going to leave the day after graduation, so we have a great deal to do. Sister Rosemary will get in touch with our schools across the country and make sleeping arrangements. Sister Clarissa will drive the bus, and Sister Celestine will arrange a music program to be presented at the rally. And uh, Sister George, I'd like you to prepare an art and science display to show the other schools they are the kind of things that we're doing here. Oh, I'll get right to it, Mother. Oh, Sister George. Uh, before I forget it, uh, His Excellency asked me to congratulate you. For the bombing? For suggesting that St. Francis take part in the rally. 
I'm going to ask you sisters to recommend the students you think should go, based on certain qualifications, of course. What are the qualifications, Mother? Uh, junior and senior girls. Uh, be average or better. And the... But, Mother, be average, that will exclude so many well-rounded and creative students. Uh, be average, cooperative attitudes, and reasonable hygiene habits. Well, guess that eliminates all my girls. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you looked under those turn-of-the-century gym suits your girls wear, you might find one live one you could recommend. They're not turn of the century. I designed those gym suits myself in 1946. More like 1846. Sisters, please. This is a community of nuns, not an army barracks. But, Daddy, it's only $150. That's cheaper than sending me to camp, and it's going to be very educational. There'll be folk singers. Folk singers aren't communists, Daddy. Only those with beards. Password. Agent 007's greatest thing since popcorn. Full house. We're taking reservations for Friday. That's not fair. So sue me. Sure, all I have to do is get chosen. Reverend Mother thinks I'm the devil's disciple with homicidal tendencies and overtones of psychotic neuroses. Nobody's perfect. How's business? Just fair. It's going to get worse. What pea brain called a plow? As you're all such music lovers, I'm sure you'll be delighted to know that you're going to spend the next two weekends cleaning out the music room. Get Devin off the floor. As for you two, I'll see you in the morning. Boy, it's getting harder and harder to make that doll around this place. And it's going to get even harder. As of now, St. Francis Argogo is out of business. <laughs> die if I don't get chosen. Of course you'll get chosen, and so will I. After all, the qualifications are so elementary. Be average, good social attitude, reasonable hygiene habits. Well, that takes care of me. I got a D average. Reverend Mother says my attitude stinks and I'm a slob. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll be late for class. Who wants to go to a stinking rally anyways? You're only saying that because you're not going. Shrivel up. And you're not going either. I'm straight A's. Three years running. Grabs you, don't it? Not terribly. Grades only count for so much. You don't get points for blowing up the lab, except from Sister George. Bye. Ooh, I think I hate her. So why should you be an exception? No chance, right? About as much as a snowball in hello, Sister George. Well, 
What's our local mafia up to today? Well, we were just talking about the rally, sister. And how great it would be if we were chosen. It's going to be a memorable experience and one that we'll cherish forever. You don't have to do a snow job on me. You know, I'm the one who suggested going to the rally to Mother. And I have the scars to prove it. You don't happen to know if we were chosen, do you? That's classified information. But you know whether or not you qualify. That's the trouble. You don't suppose Reverend Mother would break down and reconsider so we could go? <laughs> right now, Mother wouldn't give either one of you a free pass to a disaster. Isn't there anything we can do? Well, I might try praying. Praying helps, but making a pitch can't hurt. I'll see what I can do. But I'm not promising it'll work. Meanwhile, cheer up. You want people to think St. Francis isn't a fun place? Will you take care of these, sister, please? Testing, testing. Testing, testing. One, two, buckle my shoe. Sister. Watch out below! Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. It's for Sister Clarissa. She's been looking for it. I wasn't aware we were going by boat. <laughs> well, it's not for sailing, Mother. It's for sitting. Thank you, Mother. There's nothing wrong with my hearing, Sister. Yet. Sea rations. Uh, for the trip. I really don't think we'll need them, Sister. Sea rations? We're not going to war, sister. We're going to California. Well, uh, what if we can't find a restaurant sometime? Well, then we'll live on nuts and berries like the rest of the natives. Mother, I have a marvelous new poster to show you. Uh, you like this sort of thing, sister? Oh, very much. It's a light bulb. Of course. I think of it as a contemporary still life which reflects our culture. Oh, it's great. It's just great. I'm sorry, sister. Mexico comes after Texas, sister. How I love to hear the organ in the chapel in the moonlight as we're strolling down. Uh, we're really not going to do that one at the rally, are we, sister? We are. We have always sung it. It's tradition at St. Francis. Roses and twine. Uh, well, da, 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 da. how about if just this once we blow tradition? Why don't you borrow some of Roosevelt's records and get an idea of uh, how the kids are swinging? Ask her for the gorilla's new album. Got wheels and I'm going to heaven. Baby. She makes the most outrageous well, suggestions. Reverend, Mother, I want fruits and nuts. We're not naming this. Remember, sisters, sisters, and I was sisters, got... sisters, please, I, I'm going to talk to her again. I know you find many of her avant-garde ideas more becoming to a coffee house than a convent. I do too. However, we are committed to make this trip, so let's make the best of things. I realize it isn't easy for you, but the world is changing, and if we're going to be a part of it rather than apart from it. We may have to make some changes, too. Even if we don't agree with everything, it's important that we keep an open mind. Don't you think so, sisters? Brainwashed. Mother! Did Sister Clarissa tell you about the bus? What about the bus? The springs are shot, the radiator leaks, the clutch slips, the block's cracked, and we need new tires. The bus will never make it cross-country. It certainly will. 
Chuck down at the service station said there's still plenty of life in the old girl. Chuck at the service station doesn't know his gasket from a casket. The only thing holding that old jalopy together is a prayer. What's wrong with prayer? Well, nothing, sister. Every time I get into that old heap, I pray to God for a new bus. how grateful we are for the new bus, Mr. Clancy. It's very generous of you. My pleasure, Reverend Mother. Actually, I made a very good deal through one of our subsidiary companies, and uh, after all, it is a tax deduction. Yes, yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful how our tax structure brings out the best in people? It's very good. It's very good, Reverend Mother. Girl, line up for roll call. Devin, Janet, Joellen. We'll take very good care of Marvel and Mr. Clancy. I know how you worry about her. Yes, uh, thank you. Naturally, I'll miss not being with her this summer. As a matter of fact, if my associates and I didn't have a great deal of business to transact in Europe, I'd, I'd have her with me, of course. Barbara. Of course. I really appreciate your taking her along on the rally. I realized that she didn't qualify exactly. Her grades Other are... things were taken into consideration, Mr. Clancy. Oh. Bye, Daddy. I'll write every day. Arriva Dirty. Barbara. Hillary. Oh, Barbara Land. And now Patty. Bye. 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 Who are you poking? I see your devoted sore loser friend didn't come to say goodbye. Well, Rosabelle should have been chosen to go. Maybe Reverend Mother was afraid she'd blow up the bus. And, of course, the only reason you were chosen is because your father donated the bus to St. Francis. Well, don't knock it. The only crummy thing your father ever donated to St. Francis was you! <laughs> Mother, who is that? One of Mr. Clancy's business associates. Here, there's a wonderful zoo in St. Louis. I was wondering if we could visit there. Uh, I... I think the girls might enjoy that. Well, we'll have to wait till we get to... 
Stop the bus! Open the door. The only way to fly. Oh. There. That ought to hold it. Mother, I'm so glad you decided not to send Rosabel home. It would break her heart. And she did show a great deal of initiative. Initiative, my foot. The only reason she's going along is because it's much too complicated to send her home. She did get written permission from her parents. To ride on the top of the bus? She'll have to borrow some clothes from one of the girls. It's OK, Reverend Mother. All her clothes are in my suitcase. Ooh. That figures. Well, shall we get the show on the road again, sister? being repaired. Oh, are all the girls on the bus, sister? Everyone but Sister George, Rosabel, and Marvelette. Where have they taken off to now? Out of that line.
Jo. Go, Mary Jo, please go. Come, darling. Go. Sister, help me, please.
lovely place to sister. I hope all the arrangements you've made across the country are just as nice. Thank you, Before. I'm Father Chase. Welcome to St. Francis. Thank you, Father. They're boys. Well, I should hope so. St. Francis is a boys' school, sister. This is our summer session. All right, fellas, let's get some of that luggage down. <laughs> Please don't. Where, when you made these arrangements, that this was a boys' school, Sister Rosemary? Oh, Mother. I made these arrangements, Mother. Mother, we could use the emergency fund and go to a motel. No, we'll stay here just as Sister George planned. All right, girls, get your things. We're spending the night here. <laughs> Contain yourself, I... sister. It's not the end of the world. Well, but it could be the end of us. If we just sit around and wait for our arteries to harden while the rest of the world is in a turmoil. I want to make a meaningful contribution. And I want to make it with joy. If I conduct myself like a 20th century woman, I don't want to be patronized by people who say, Oh, look at that darling little nun. She's just like a real person. I am a real person. Flesh, blood, feelings, and convictions. That's for sure. Sister's a real firebrand, isn't she, Mother? Let's hope she doesn't intend to burn down the church. No, just uh, warm it up a bit. More coffee, sisters? Please continue, sister. I'm sure sister intends to. Father Chase, don't you feel the most important thing is to... to share people's lives and problems? And we certainly can't do that if we're locked away in a little nun world. I don't think you can call us locked away. After all, we're not a cloistered order. A cloister isn't always a place, Mother. Sometimes it's a state of mind. That's very true, sister. But aren't you afraid of becoming less a nun and, say, well, a social worker, sister? Oh, no, Father. Wherever we go, our faith goes with us. And we hold it up for all to see. Faith, like, like love, should be shared, not hoarded. Beautifully put, sister. Thank you, Father. There's a new wind blowing through the church. And a I new wind is fine. But we can do without a typhoon. She 
flies away today Don't feel too bad and don't be sad It's just as well You know where angels go Trouble follows Trouble follows Trouble follows Come on down Get your feet back on the ground And your head out of the clouds above My friend, now listen to me Take it slow Celestine. Celestine! Yes, Mother. Where did our girls get those, those, those things they're wearing? They must have shortened them, Mother. Your girls look wonderful, Mother. This is a night my boys will never forget. Neither will I. Interesting art form, don't you think, Mother? Very. Remarkable likeness. They're only paper boxes, Mother. Good. So disposable. You certainly run a swinging school, Father. We try. We should have a dance like this at the end of each term. I know our bishop would approve. He's really responsible for our being here. Isn't that right, Mother? Yes. Bless him. Trouble follows, trouble follows, trouble Don't tell me you slept in that chair all night. I did. Don't you trust your girls, Mother? Of course. Just as much as you trust your boys. 
Breakfast? I could use a cup of tea. I hope someday you and your boys will visit us. I'll bet you do. Father, Father, I hope I can find you at the pray in in Washington next month. Just look for me. I'll be wearing black. More like red. What was that, Mother? Oh, I said we're ready to go, Father. Thank you again. Have a good trip. I'll pray for you. And I'll pray for you. Somebody better. If there's going to be a happening, it better happen. You're better. <laughs> Oh, it's groovy. Roosevelt, Marvel Ed, the bomb worked great. Hey, Roosevelt, don't you want your money? Reverend Mother, would you give this money to Roosevelt and Marvel Ed? No, you give it to Father Chase to replace the broken window. But they deserve it. Don't you worry. I'll give them what they deserve. You mean we're supposed to wash the whole bus, Reverend Mother? From bumper to bumper. But it's such a big bus, Reverend Mother. Yes, isn't it? out on this caper, sister.
gas gauge read empty. Why didn't you fill up at the last town, sister? Well, when it read empty in the old bus, there was still five gallons in the tank. I understood the old bus. I'd appreciate it if you established a similar rapport with the new bus. Now, uh, please see if you can flag down a motorist and get some help. Yes, Mother. I'll go with you, sister. Uh, do we have any more cold drinks for the girls? <laughs> no, but we've plenty of hot ones. Uh, the ice melted. I said that we should use dry ice. Chemicals are unhealthy. So is dying of thirst. Oh, and incidentally, if we pull these skirts up to an intelligent length, we might stand a fighting chance of surviving this heat. And show our legs. Well, it's no secret we have legs, is it, sister? If we had any sense, we'd get rid of this medieval garb and get into something nice and cool and drip dry. Drip dry nuns? Did you hear what she said, Mother? Drip dry. In this heat, I, I wouldn't mind being drip dry myself. got trouble. So help him, man. Help him. You're sending loud and clear, baby. Loud and clear. But you're getting the wrong message. Get back to the bus, girls. Well, man, it's a penguin. <laughs> she for real, man. So ask him, man. You for real? Yes, I'm for real. Aren't you hot in them weird black threads, lady? No hotter than you are in those weird black threads. You got a big mouth, lady. And you have a big knife. But that doesn't necessarily make you a big man. I said so. You shouldn't get him mad, lady. I mean, he's a real bad boy. Bad boys don't frighten me. Especially when they have to carry knives to give them courage. I bet you don't carry a knife. Now, how would you know that, lady? Because, obviously, you're the leader. And a leader doesn't need guns or knives to give him authority. His weapon is intelligence. You know what? You're right. But now tell me something. You were real scared, weren't you, when you saw that knife coming at you? Oh, you'd like for me to say that I was. Because if I was scared, then uh, what I am and what I believe in really isn't all that great, right? Okay, so you're smart, but I still want to know, were you scared? Let's just say that I feared for my mortal life, but not for my immortal soul. Crazy. Sister, Sister George. Here's the money for the gas. Oh, I'll offer it to him, Mother, but I doubt if he'll take it. Sister George, I still don't understand how you got them to do this for us. We communicated.
change it. Oh, don't be ridiculous, sister. You can't handle that monster. Out of gas, a flat tire in the middle of nowhere. What next? Maybe there's a town or a ranch somewhere. I'll start walking, Mother. Maybe I can get a lift. We haven't seen a car in the last half hour, and you couldn't possibly walk in this heat. Doesn't anyone live in New Mexico? She can't do that. She just can't do that. I mean, it, it's humiliating. Humiliating my foot. It's the way the Blessed Virgin rode into Bethlehem, isn't it? Giddy up! <laughs> I do, ladies. How many of those boys are your sons, Mr. Faraday? Only six of them. What a lovely family. You must be a Catholic, Mr. Faraday. <laughs> no, ma'am, Baptist. But we Baptists are kind of partial to be getting to. Right, sister? Right. Oh, Mr. Faraday enlightened me on so many things on our drive back to the bus. It's very kind of you to put us up for the night, Mr. Faraday. Uh, it's my pleasure. You wouldn't have made Flagstaff till midnight. There's a lot of lonely highway between here and there. Jetty boy. <laughs> Yippee! Hey, Rosabelle, what's eating you? going to break up that romance. Now, if you take my advice... I'd rather take poison. Temper, temper. I'm just giving you the facts of life. 
Don't you know friendship flies out the window when love flies in? Why don't you crawl back under your rock? Well, I tried. <laughs> that's my good deed for the day. And that's my good deed for the day. <laughs> Later, maybe. <laughs> Aren't they adorable? Turn purple. It'd be better than turning green with envy. After all, Rosabelle can't help it if she's gorgeous and irresistible. Bye. Drop dead. said you were fine. Now, come on, get up and get dressed. And the boys are going to give you a prize for the best Bronco Buster this side of the Rio Grande. Hey, it's a great party. You don't want to miss it, do you? Do you want to tell me about it? Oh, well, it'll all be forgotten by the time we get to the rally. I'm not going to the rally. Of course you are. No. I'm going to call my father tomorrow and tell him. He'll fix it for me to meet him somewhere. Oh, Marvel Ann, that's ridiculous. Uh, well, maybe if we just talk about what's bothering you. I mean... Isn't that what friends are for? I don't know what friends are for. And I don't need any, and you're not supposed to be my friend anyway. Marlena, oh, you don't mean that. I do, and I'm not going to that stupid rally, and I don't want to talk about it, especially to you. So go away, please. Just go away. Sister? Yes? Can I talk to Reverend Mother, please? I mean, if she isn't busy and you can find her. Of course. Marvel Ann. I am sleeping. Marvel Ann, I just wanted to tell you. you. Do not sit on my bed. The slightest movement gives me excruciating pain. I'm sorry. I really am sorry, Marvel Ann. I don't know what for. I suppose you can't help it if you're gorgeous and irresistible. What? I said you can't help it if you're gorgeous and irresistible. Who said I'm gorgeous and irresistible? Everyone. I'm not. Yes, you are. In fact, I don't know why anyone so gorgeous and irresistible has anything to do with ugly, fat, stupid, dopey old me. You're not stupid. Just ugly and fat, right? I didn't say that. Oh! You're hopeless. I don't even know why I came in here. Then why don't you go? I will go when I want to go. And I just don't happen to want to go. 
Nobody's asking you to be a martyr. If I want to be a martyr, I'll be a martyr. And nobody's going to tell me not to be a martyr. As a matter of fact, if the pay weren't so bad, I'd probably take up martyring for a profession. Saint Roosevelt, ha! <laughs> That'd be a kick. Don't knock it. You should be so lucky to have a friend who's a saint. Big deal. What's that make me? It, it makes you my best and dearest friend. Honest. Cross my heart and hope to suffer all the fires. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> Did I hurt your poor broken body? <laughs> it's not broken. Just bent a little. Come on, you can sit down. Marley. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you first. Well, I only wanted to say... Oh, I was dumb to be jealous. Real friends don't get jealous just because their real friends happen to be pretty and have a very high IQ. Look, I know I'm kind You're of not. nothing. You're not. You're the bravest, most loyal person I know. And don't ever say again that you're fat and ugly. <laughs> How about stupid? That you can say. Stop crying. <laughs> Who's crying? I happen to have a very advanced case of soggy eyeballs. <laughs> It's catching you. You know what? What? I feel good. Oh, me too. <laughs> You're behaving like a child, sister. I'm sorry. But I just don't understand. I thought I was close to Marvel and to all the girls. And you are possibly just a little too close. Perhaps that's why she felt she couldn't confide in you. You see, sister, you put yourself on the girl's level, and that's fine, but only to a point. Because if we or their parents or adults generally are on their level, then who are they going to go to when they're really in trouble? Do you mean Marvel Ann couldn't talk to me? Couldn't come to me for understanding? Sister, when a four-year-old gets hurt, he doesn't go running to his friend for consolation. He goes crying home to mother. Marvel Ann isn't four years old. No. But she's still a child, and in that respect, most of us remain children. She was hurt and upset, and she didn't want a friend. She wanted a mother. Are you saying I failed with the girls? No. You're a smashing success with the girls on their level. And if you don't change, that's where you'll remain. They need and want more than that from us. Well, if it's wrong for me to be on the same level with the girls, then it's equally wrong for you to be so far above them you can't be reached. I know you're upset, sister. You enjoy the whole nun mystique, don't you, mother? Because it places you above the ordinary. It makes you something special. Don't say things you'll regret, sister. And you resent me because I represent change and you don't want change. It's only natural to cling to what one understands. Even if that understanding is limited. Nothing which remains static can survive. That is the truth, mother. There are also some truths you had better face, sister. Like whether or not I'm fit to be a nun? I didn't pose the question, sister. You did. Now you answer it. That's a beauty, Mr. Faraday. I'll treasure it forever. Excuse me. Mr. Faraday, thank you very much for everything. Can't thank you enough for all you've done, Mr. Faraday. It was my pleasure. And my boys. They're wonderful boys. You can be very proud of them. I wouldn't pin any halos on them. I gave them a good talking to yesterday. No horsing around and not one word that couldn't be said in church. You'd be surprised at some of the things I've heard said in church. <laughs> I guess us Baptists are more straight-laced. 
In church, I mean. Time to go. Thank you again, Mr. Barrett. Have a good trip. You'll make it. I know we will. Goodbye. yesterday. You got Jed's address. I know, we'll write. <laughs> One of them grew up a little sooner than the other. Buying some moccasins, Mother. Oh, they'll be a nice change from your sneakers. Well, sister, this place has a fascinating history, Mother. And the girls tell me that there's a museum inside the post full of old Indian relics. Well, let's you and I go see it and add two more relics to the collection. <laughs> Interesting, Tanya. Yeah. Hey! Uh, excuse me a moment, sister. Reverend Mother! I brought these for you, Reverend Mother. They're made by the Tanos Indians. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, dear. They're just what I've always wanted. Would you put them in the bus with all the other treasures we've collected? I love you, dear. Yes, Mother. They got some great rocks inside. Can't we wait long enough for me to buy some? And I've got eight more pairs of moccasins to buy. I promised the girls at school, Reverend Mother, and I promised. And promises are important. Go ahead, girls. How far out of the way will the detour take us, sister? About 125 miles. 125 miles? We'll lose close to a day. There are only two days left to the rally. The detour was plainly marked on the trip, Dick. I don't know how I missed it. 
Well, I do. You had to do it all yourself. You wouldn't let me or anybody help you with the maps or the triptychs. They were your treasures. Now look where you've gotten us. Nowhere. That will do, sister. Sorry, Mother. Well, it, it's been a long, hard trip, and anyone can make a mistake. Now, please get back in the bus before you all have sunstroke. Sister George, I want to speak to you. I prefer to stand, thank you. Well, I don't, so please sit down. I know you're upset about what happened last night at the ranch. What happened I... last night has nothing to do with this. I'm only concerned with getting those girls to the rally. If we'd had a professional driver, this never would have happened. I said we should have one from the very beginning, that it was wrong to let Sister Clarissa drive. Sister Clarissa has been driving our bus for over 20 years. She began at a time when very few of us had the courage to even venture out alone. Since then, it's been her responsibility, and she gets great pleasure from it. Surely you can understand that. I think Sister should be commended for what she did 20 years ago. But she was not capable of making this trip, and you know it. I could argue the point, but I won't. What's more important is that replacing Sister would have made her feel useless. And I cannot deny her the joy of giving, no matter how small, a gift. No concept or institution which is indifferent to the needs of the human spirit can survive. We must listen to the heart, too, sister. Does that mean not facing reality? Does sentiment preclude common sense? I am not about to discuss philosophy, dialectics, or the new look in the church. Not in the middle of the desert in 100 degree heat. Come along, sister. Reverend Mother, do we know where we're going? We do, but only if we've led good Christian lives. I wasn't thinking that far ahead. <laughs> total loss, Mother. We may get something out of this. If you mean broken bones, I couldn't agree with you more. No, I mean the detour. It could be very educational. We go right through an Indian reservation. Wild Indians? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, sister. There hasn't been an Indian uprising in over a hundred years. <laughs>
I'll win an award for this. It's terrific. Ow. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's it. Keep going. Ten more Indians then. Get on this set. We have Indians, don't we? in my picture, I would have put a bus in my picture. But this is 1855, and the pioneers were very backward. Please stop shouting. We said we were sorry, and we hope you'll forgive us. Forgive it? Absolution? She wants absolution from me? I'm not even a good Catholic. You're not even a good director. Huh? Roosevelt. Well, Mother, I saw his last picture, and it was rotten. You didn't like it? like it. I wanted my money back. Roosevelt, will you please go back with the girls? Maybe you wanted your money back, too. Or you decide it would be better to sabotage this picture. That's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. Huge. Now, the sister who drives the bus, Sister Clarissa, simply panicked. Oh, yeah? She's highly imaginative and rather inexperienced in these matters. Bet she's inexperienced. She, she should be locked up. Would you? Who is this sister, sister? Who? You're dangerous. You don't know what you're doing. And neither do you. Huh? According to this pamphlet, you are using the wrong Indians. The wrong Indians? Yes. The Navajos were a peace-loving, domestic people. And when this picture comes out, mm -hmm. I intend not to see it. You're a troublemaker. All right, everybody, get back to work. And tell the wardrobe to change the bees on the Indians. Don't stand there, get back to work. <whistles> move, move. Everybody's an authority. Everybody's a critic. None, bus drivers. <laughs> All right, Sister Clarissa, please get all the girls back in the bus. We're leaving. Not today. And we can forget about the rally. We're not going to get there. We broke our axle fighting the Indians. <laughs> must be wonderful to be so creative. Thank you. You're very kind. I never realized how difficult it is to make a film. I'm so impressed. Mm -hmm. You're a very remarkable man. It's very sweet of you, Mother. Why are you all standing here? You must be terribly hungry. Why don't you walk over to the catering truck and have a bite to eat? Be my guest. Why, that's most gracious of you. Oh, please don't let me take you from your work. I've taken up enough of your time. Oh, it's been my pleasure, Mother. Well, you heard what he said. We're welcome to this nice gentleman's hospitality. Unless you just rather stand around for the next two hours, because that's how long it's going to take to fix the bus. Now gather up the other girls and get something to eat.
Well, sister, it seems we're going to make the rally after all. Yes, I heard. Aren't you pleased? I know I am. I don't understand why. Aside from the fact you don't want the girls to be disappointed. And that's a very good reason, but it's not the only one. I want to get to that rally, too. I find that hard to believe. You've been opposed to the rally from the very beginning. I did have my reservations, but it's proven to be a wonderful experience. And in many ways, I have you to thank. You're thanking me? After all your objections to my ideas and after... Well, after questioning my fitness to be a nun. I only voiced your doubts and your thoughts, sister. And if I spoke to you in anger, it was because I was also questioning myself. Self-examination is always painful and disturbing. I know now the cloister isn't always a place. It can be a state of mind. And if I can't get out of that cloister, then it's time I got out of St. Francis and let someone else take over who can equip our children for the kind of life Mother, you can't mean that. Oh, now, sister, if you were planning to be charitable to me, don't. It would be out of character. Well, I just think that, well, it took more courage for you to say what you just said than, than it would take for me to march in a hundred picket lines. And, well, if you leave St. Francis, it'll be over my dead body. I know you and, and what you are, and... Well, if you leave, Lord knows who'll take your place. And, well, I just couldn't go through all this again. Damn, I can't find my handkerchief. Sister, uh, please watch your language. Yes, thank you. Mother. Why don't you tell me something? I'll try. How did you get that man to do this for us? We communicated. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I owe you two bits, but how do you know they were gonna make up? Because adults always unite against the common enemy. What enemy? Us. Well, we forded the rivers and crossed the mountains and fought off the Indians. But we made it to the rally, all right, and it was worth everything we went through to get there. It opened our eyes and our hearts and our minds. But what's more important, we got involved, not just in caring, because we've always cared, but in doing. Though Sister George and I haven't resolved all of our differences, there is a good stiff breeze blowing through St. Francis. And you'll see we have changed some of our habits.
she's in your arms you feel so heavenly that you can't see the danger there take care where angels go angels go trouble follow come on down get your feet back on the ground and your head And don't be sad, it's just as well You know where angels go Angels go Trouble follow 